so way back when I was a Mac user and I was, it was a, it was a university thing. I think as a college student, you kind of have to be a Mac user. At least there's some rule that says you have to be. So I thought I had to be a Mac user too. And I, you know, I had a MacBook, I had an iMac, I had the whole kit and caboodle. I was an Apple fanboy at the, at that point, And it was a shameful experience in, in my past, but that's not why we're here today. What I want to, the reason why I bring it up is because during that time I came across a program called, I think it was called text expander or something like that. And the basic idea there was that you could input a list of things into a configuration file or into the program. And that when you typed those things, it would replace it with something else. So if you misspelled the word the all the time, like I freaking do, I know it's a silly thing to do, but I always type it in the wrong order. I have, you know, specific reasons why I do that. I don't do it on purpose. But the point is, is that I always type certain words wrong. And when I was using text expander, I could put the wrong thing into the text expander program and it would automatically replace it with the right thing. And same thing if I wanted to type in the date, I could just type in date and it would expand to the day's date. That's what text expander did. And when I moved to Windows and then later Linux, I kind of missed that program. So recently, or I guess a few months ago, I was taking a look and seeing if there was something for Linux that did the same thing as Text Expander, and it turns out that there is. It's called Espanso, E-S-P-A-N-S-O. And this little piece of software is fantastic. Not only is it open source, but it works really, really well. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we jump in, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. So let's take a look at Espanso. So the idea here is that when you type in something that you want to have replaced, you'd go into the configuration file and you'd set it up so that when you typed that thing, it would replace the thing that you typed with the thing that you actually desired. So for example, if I go here to Discord and I'm just typing along and messaging my friends on my Discord server, link in the video description if you want to be one of those friends. Uh, if I go here and I mistype the word the, T-E-H, as you can see, it automatically corrected to T-H-E, the proper spelling of the word. Because I, like I said, I always type the T-E-H. I always do. Don't do it on purpose again. Just my dyslexia acting up for whatever reason. Always do it. I can't stop. So I have set it up with a Spanso to change that. Same thing with the word YouTube. So if I type in YouTube, it actually does the proper capitalization for YouTube. One of the coolest things about Espanso though, beyond just being able to set up your own expansions, is that they actually have language packs that you can download so that it correct corrects common mistakes. So for example, one of the things that it has, if you download it properly, you can say type in D-O-N-T, it'll actually properly contract that word. It'll add the apostrophe where it needs to go. Same thing with like, just say doesn't like so, it will properly contract that word so that it appears just like it should. And and it has these packs, so for common spelling mistakes and things like that, you can download those and you don't even have to create the expansions yourself. You can just have those packs and they run in the background. So what does this actually look like? So if we take a look at the configuration file, this is what it looks like. It's in a YAML file, so you need to know a little bit of YAML. And when I say you need to know a little bit of YAML, really what you need to know is that it the, the spacing matters here. So as long as you follow the syntax and the way things are laid out here, you're going to be fine. And it has some examples along the line before you get into it, so you can just copy the examples. But the basic idea here is that you, you tell it what the trigger is. So in, in the case of YOU here, I have that set up so that, because I always capitalize O in the word U, and I wanted to change that. So when I type in capital Y, capital O, small, lowercase U, that's the trigger, and it will replace it with the proper capital Y, small case O, lowercase U. You get the idea, right? Same thing with YouTube. When I type in YouTube, it'll that's the trigger. It'll replace it with YouTube properly capitalized. Same thing with the, right? So those are the things that I have just added here 
to use. And really, it's the only three that I've added myself because the packs that they have are so good. So I'll show you those packs here in a minute. But the basic idea here is that any trigger that you want, you can just put here. So, for example, again, they have the date one automatically. So if we go back to Discord, let's just type in colon date is actually going to then put the date in and expand it just like you would if you typed it yourself, right? So that's what this part here actually looks like. You can actually change the format if you want to. There's a whole bunch of different stuff. You can check the documentation for how you can deal with the type and the parameters and all that stuff for whatever trigger replace mechanism that you want. You can do basically any of that stuff. Same thing with the shell expansion if you wanted to. So for example, you could do the shell and then replace it with the output and then have the command be echo hello world or whatever. You can use this in all forms in Vim. You can use it in your terminal. You can use it in Discord. It basically functions system-wide as a service that runs in the background. Now, here is one piece of caution for you is that there's two different pieces of Espansa. One works on Xorg, one works on Wayland. So if you use a Wayland compositor or you're using GNOME or KDE with Wayland, you'll need to make sure you're using the proper version of Espansa that works with Wayland. They don't come together. You have to download them separately and you don't want them both running at the same time, obviously. It will actually warn you if you're running the wrong one. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So let's actually take a look at the packs that they have to offer. So if you go to their website, which is just espanso.org, and you click on packages, you can actually see the packages that they have to, on offer. So they have, like, so say for example, you're a web developer and you're always using lorem ipsum, and you don't want to actually have to type out lorem ipsum all the time, or you don't have to go find it and copy and paste it. You can actually just click on this, and then copy this, go into a terminal, paste it, listen to to Kitty tell you why you shouldn't paste things. I'm going to paste it anyways. It's going to install inside of, of Espanso. And then up here, it's going to tell you in a notification that Espanso configuration has been reloaded. And then you can actually use that particular package. So if we use one of their triggers, so these triggers are now automatically loaded in Espanso. So if I type in this one here, so let's just go do that. So it's this sign here to, and then what was it? Lorem, right? L-O-R-E-M just like so, and it'll actually give us some lorem ipsum. Now, that's supposed to be two sentences. Uh, I don't really see two sentences there. Maybe that's a, 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 a terminal problem, but you get the idea, right? That the, uh, Actually, that's, let's just see if it does it here. Let's do pound. Oops, that's not a pound. That's an at sign. So pound lorem like so, and it, yeah, it doesn't really work very well in the terminal. So let's just actually open up Vim here and do pound lorem like so, and actually... Not quite working in Vim either, but you get the idea, right? So if you if we do, it does actually sometimes work a little bit. So that particular package isn't quite where it's at, but I'm, I'm guessing that if we were in Discord, it would work better. So if we type in pound like lorem, like so, yeah, there we go. It worked better in Discord. So you can see that there are some places where it doesn't always work. The individual triggers like the and YouTube that I have set up on my own do seem to work just fine in Vim most of the time. Sometimes they don't. So that is something to keep in mind. But if you're using a graphical application and it's in your browser or you're using the Google Docs or you're using Kate or whatever, it works just fine. It's in the terminal where it does have a little bit of, you know, issue. But that's one of the packages you can add. And obviously there's other packages here. So you can do emojis, the HTML utilities package. So if you wanted to have it so that you could expand into particular pieces of HTML, so it would give you the doc type and the Medicare set and all that stuff. All this stuff would be if perfect for someone who is a web developer but isn't using the automatic expansion stuff like VS Code offers. So if you're using like Kate or whatever, you don't want to set all this stuff and you want it to happen system-wide, you could use this particular package set. One of the packages that I was talking about earlier is actually this one. I actually showed this off earlier. is the contraction-en. That's the one that replaces contractions when you don't properly put the apostrophe in the right place. And they do have this for other languages. So things like Italian and Spanish and French and stuff. So there are other packages for other languages if you don't speak or you or write you know, in English. So that's another thing that's really cool. And uh, there's another one for, like I said, there's one for common commonly mistyped words that you can download. All this stuff is just a matter of 
going up here, paste this into the terminal, and, it, and after you've, obviously you have to have Inspanso installed and running, you copy this, you put it in the terminal, and it would actually install this particular package. And it will reconfigure, reset up the configuration file just for you automatically, and that's as simple as it is. So, in addition to being able to do the things on your own, so your own custom triggers and replacements, you can also add in those packages that will make it so that you don't have to do all of it on your own. So the commonly misspelled words thing is something that gets, is kind of runs in the background and prevents me from misspelling things all the time. It's just really fabulous. It's fan freaking tastic. And it just is one of those things that you set up to run at, at boot and it just runs in the background. You kind of forget that it's there, but every once in a while you just see like, oh, I misspelled the word the again, because I always do. And it corrects it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to go delete, 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 slowly type in the word the because I know how to spell it and then move on. It just does it for me. Now, some will say that this is a very lazy way of doing writing or messing around with uh, you know, words on the computer. It is, but you know, it saves you some time. And I think that that's the best thing about Espanso is that it can save you quite a bit of time and it allows you to customize this thing as much as you want. You can do all the customizing yourself or you can download the packages and it just runs there in the background and it's fantastic. So this is available on basically any Linux distribution. It's not in the OpenSUSE repositories, but it is an open build service. It is, I believe, in the Fedora repositories. Uh, but it might be a copper. I'm not ex ex exactly sure. Like I said at the beginning, you will want to make sure you, you're downloading the correct version here. So if you're downloading the X11 version, there's a dev package. There's Fedora uses the, the app image. I suppose that they recommend the app image for most everybody. But it's actually in the most repositories. Again, if you're on uh, Arch, you'd probably download it from the AUR if you wanted to download the actual binary instead of a you know, app image. So downloading it and installing is, is really easy and it runs at startup. One of the things that you will have to do once you do have it installed is you'll want to start the service. So you'll need to register as a service and then you'll want to start it as a service. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind here, of course, is that if you're not using systemd, this particular way of doing things is going to be different for you. Uh, this, I believe, only works on systemd, and it does ag actually say that. So this is a systemd service, and obviously if you're not running systemd, it's going to be a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. Chances are, if that's the way you have to do things normally, you know who you are. So that right there is a span. So just a, a, a quick look through, and I've been using this now for months and months. It is fantastic. It just runs in the background and does its thing. Every once in a while, I'll think, well, you know, I'm going to go look through some packages and see if I can add stuff. So one thing I've noticed is that even though I've added probably five or six packages, it doesn't affect system performance at all. I thought that maybe that it would, but it doesn't. I haven't noticed it taking up any resources whatsoever. Every time I'm tr trolling through H top or B top or whatever, I don't even see a Spanzo listed. It's just there, runs in the background, takes up very little resources, and does its job appropriately. So that is a span. So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the merch shop where you'll find desk mats and t-shirts and hats and hoodies and beanies and all sorts of awesome stuff, all branded with Linux cast logos and neat and awesome sayings and stuff like that so head on over there if you want to check out merch and help support the channel you can find that at shop.linuxcast.org thanks to everyone who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just wouldn't be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very 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 much for your support again truly appreciate it thanks everybody for watching nailed it and i'll see you next time i said the word everybody correctly on the first try. This is only my 904th video, and I finally got it. It's good. It's good. Anyways. <laughs>